so we're going to shift our weight, we're going to swivel on our axle, and we're going to counterbalance. Okay, and let's see how that works. So this time, we're going to come forward, but we're going to use the Young 16 form to apply to our feet work that we've just started. Okay? So I'm going to have to kind of make it up and modify it, okay? So here we are. We're going to start to warm up. Two without hands. Here we go. Pivot out. Walk in the right hand zigzag. Lay out your heel for an L stance. Turn the hips and waist. Bow stance. Sit back. Sit down. In substantial pivots to the left zigzag position. Heel on an L. Turn the hips and waist. Bow. Now we're going to get ready to hold our ball. But don't forget, it's our feet that are the foundations. Pivot out. We need to balance, so left hand on the bottom, right hand on the top, holding our ball, L stance, part, split your hands, bow stance, part the wild horse's mane, sit back, sit down, pivot out, left zigzag, ball for better balance, L stance, move the hips and waist, split the hands, bow stance. Half step forward means we're going to bring the back foot to its feet, to its toe, sorry, to holding our ball. Spin the ball to the right as we drop on our back foot. Lift up our left hand, lift up our right foot, point it down, and get into this position called white crane spreads its wings. Weight is continually on the back. We're going to tuck our elbow in. How do we tuck our elbow in? It's right now, it's out. I'm going to tuck it this way. Can you do that? White crane. Tuck it in. Okay? Tuck it in, drop your front foot. Tuck it in, drop your front foot. Now you're going to come down towards your dantin about hmm, six, eight inches away from your body and split your body in half. Bisect your body. Swirl back. Set it up correctly, we're going to brush our knee, lift the front foot up, place it on its heel, multitask to brush your knee. One, we do it two times. Sit back, sit down, pivot out, set it up correctly, L stance, multitask, magic of brush knee. Two. The third time, we're going to pretend or start to do a brush knee, but we're going to deflect. See how we can use that same form to deflect. We sit back, no different. We zigzag out. We come up, shoulder, fist that shoulder hand. Take an L stance. Deflect. Bring that back hand to parry, step out on an L, and punch. Touch. That means strip the opponent off of you. Roll back, sit down. Spiral up, lunge forward. Okay? Good. Then we get back to, but then we're going to go into something that's better done and seen on a different angle. That's why we stopped. Okay, so yes. So we're going to shift our weight. We're going to swivel on our axle, and we're going to counterbalance. Okay, and let's see how that works. So this time, we're going to come forward, but we're going to use the Young 16 form to apply to our feet work that we've just started. Okay, so I'm going to have to kind of make it up and modify it, okay? So here we are, we're going to start to warm up. Two without hands, here we go. Pivot out, walk in the right hand zigzag, lay out your heel for an L stance, turn the hips and waist, bow stance. Sit back, sit down. In substantial pivots to the left zigzag position, heel on an L, turn the hips and waist, 
bow. Now we're going to get ready to hold our ball, but don't forget it's our feet that are the foundations. Pivot out, we need to balance, so left hand on the bottom, right hand on the top, holding our ball, L stance, part, split your hands, bow stance, part the wild horse's mane, sit back, sit down, pivot out, left zigzag, ball for better balance, L stance, move the hips and waist, split the hands, bow stance. Half step forward means we're going to bring the back foot to its feet, to its toe, sorry, to holding our ball. Spin the ball to the right as we drop on our back foot. Lift up our left hand, lift up our right foot, point it down, and get into this position called white crane spreads its wings. Weight is continually on the back. We're going to tuck our elbow in. How do we tuck our elbow in? It's right now, it's out. I'm going to tuck it this way. Can you do that? White crane. Tuck it in. Okay? Tuck it in, drop your front foot. Tuck it in, drop your front foot. Now you're going to come down towards your dantin about hmm, six, eight inches away from your body and split your body in half. Bisect your body. Swirl back. Set it up correctly, we're going to brush our knee, lift the front foot up, place it on its heel, multitask to brush your knee. One, we do it two times. Sit back, sit down, pivot out, set it up correctly, L stance, multitask, magic of brush knee. Two. The third time, we're going to pretend or start to do a brush knee, but we're going to deflect. See how we can use that same form to deflect. We sit back, no different. We zigzag out. We come up, shoulder, fist that shoulder hand. Take an L stance, deflect. Bring that back hand to parry, step out on an L, and punch. Touch. That means strip the opponent off of you. Roll back, sit down. Spiral up, lunge forward. Okay? Let's do it the regular way, this way, okay? So give yourself space because we're going to move to the left, okay? Not a whole big, big deal like the 24, but still you need room, okay? Good Tai Chi posture, commencing form, shift weight to the right, heel comes up off the left, on the toe, open, toe, arch, heel, rotate, take a deep breath in as we elevate at shoulder level, Make yourself small, drop your shoulders, flex your knee. Shift your weight to the right or back foot as you form a T stance to hold your ball. You're going to take an L stance. L stance, move the ball, split the energy, go up the horse's mane. Sit back, sit down, pivot out, walk in that zigzag direction, hold your ball for better balance, step out on an L, Part the wild horse's mane, too. We're going to take a half step by putting our back foot on its toe, holding our ball for better balance, spinning the ball, advancing the left hand, raising it up, put the toe of the right, and point it out. This is white crane. Okay? So can you see that we were spinning the ball and spinning the ball, and the left hand went up and the right foot counterbalanced and pointed out to hold our balance. So that is a premise or that is a principle. When, we, when I said to tuck the elbow, I don't want the elbow to continue to be where it is, but I want you to slightly bring it in and then bring it as if it were going to cut your body. Okay? So white crane, 
tuck the elbow, drop the front foot, bisect imaginarily to the den, swirl back, set it up correctly, one higher, one at your shoulder. To advance, you're going to get the weightless front foot, lift it off, put it on its heel, and multitask to brush your knee. Sit back, sit down, zigzag to the right, set it up correctly, multitask to brush your knee too. The third time, we're going to sit back, sit down, set it up correctly, but fist the right hand. Push it up, bring the other hand down, set the heel out. Spin out to the right to deflect. Bring the left hand over to parry. Step out and punch on a bow stance. Then we're going to touch from the elbow. And open our palms. We're going to roll back, turn the palms down, sit down. Push up, lunge forward. Now this is when we get fancy and we do a pivot on our back or right foot. And then we do it on our front or left foot. The top matches the bottom or vice versa. You alleviate some weight of your ball of your foot of the back foot to pivot, then pivot on the front, shift the weight, hook the hand, T stance it. Left hand is off by your face, you're going to step out on an L, turn the wrist, push the palm out, single whip. Okay, we're going to go on and do all the 16, but I know that it's, it's not that easy, okay? Half step, you're going to swirl the back hand, rock the front foot, and play your lute on its heel. So your weight is on the back. You're setting yourself up by playing the peepaw. The left hand centers your body, and it's advanced. The right hand bends towards the elbow of your left, el uh, left hand. Weight on the back to set it up correctly. Drop your front foot. Left hand stays in the center, but the palm turns up while the right hand is setting up at a higher plane. We're going to repulse the monkey. We're going to lift, do several things. Bring the top hand to our ear, and we're going to lift off the ground of our front foot, because the weight is on the back to hold us stable. Here we go. Lift, ear, stretch out on the toe, then the heel. Then you're in the zigzag position, and what are you going to do? You're going to swivel or pivot on the ball of your front foot, Meet in the center of the hands, and you're going to repulse. Push forward, pull back. Setting it up correctly. Right hand now is in the center. Left hand is up higher. We're leading with our toe, so no weight on the front heel. Everybody here? Lift up off your toe. Multitask ear, toe, heel. Zigzag by pivoting on the ball, meeting in the center, repulse, two only. Now we're going to use the words pivot and pirouette. When you pivot, normally it's on your heel, and that pertains to the left or front foot. When we pirouette, we're going to put the uh, turn or rotate on our toes of the back foot. But we can't do it together, right? So here we go, one at a time. Pivot on the heel of the front foot. Spin on the toe of your back foot would automatically bring your right hand up and the palm is towards the ceiling. It's like an inside out ball, if, you, if so to speak. We're going to kick out with our right or front heel and we're going to reposition our ball. Spin out with our heel, reposition our ball. Take a L stance, spin the ball, push, and put the shuttlecock right there. Put the shuttlecock on the opposite side now, okay? 
sit back, sit down, pivot the front foot in, hold the ball. Put the left heel out, right hand comes to the forehead, turn the hips and waist, shuttles, left, all right. Okay, pin, toe, arch heel, rotate. Take a deep breath in as we elevate at shoulder level. Make yourself small, drop your shoulders, flex your knee. Shift your weight to the right or back foot as you form a T stance to hold your ball. You're gonna take an L stance. L stance, move the ball, split the energy, go up the horse's mane. Sit back, sit down. Pivot out, walk in that zigzag direction. Hold your ball for better balance. Step out on an L. Part the wild horse's mane too. We're gonna take a half step by putting our back foot on its toe, holding our ball for better balance. Spinning the ball, advancing the left hand, raising it up, put the toe of the right and point it out. This is white crane, okay? So can you see that we were spinning the ball and spinning the ball and the left hand went up and the right foot counterbalanced and pointed out to hold our balance. So that is a premise or that is a principle. When, we, when I said to tuck the elbow, I don't want the elbow to continue to be where it is, but I want you to slightly bring it in and then bring it as if it were gonna cut your body, okay? So white crane, tuck the elbow, drop the front foot, bisect imaginarily to the ten, swirl back, set it up correctly, one higher, one at your shoulder. To advance, you're gonna get the weightless front foot, lift it off, put it on its heel, and multitask to brush your knee. Sit back, sit down, zigzag to the right, Set it up correctly, multitask to brush your knee too. The third time, we're going to sit back, sit down, set it up correctly, but fist the right hand. Push it up, bring the other hand down, set the heel out. Spin out to the right to deflect. Bring the left hand over to parry. Step out and punch on a bow stance. Then we're gonna touch from the elbow, open our palms, we're gonna roll back, turn the palms down, sit down. Push up, lunge forward. Now this is when we get fancy and we do a pivot on our back or right foot. And then we do it on our front or left foot. The top matches the bottom or vice versa. You alleviate some weight of your ball of your foot of the back foot to pivot, then pivot on the front, shift the weight, hook the hand, T stance it. Left hand is up by your face. You're gonna step out on an L, turn the wrist, push the palm out, single whip. Okay, we're gonna go on and do all the 16, but I know that it's, it's not that easy, okay? Half step, you're gonna swirl the back hand, rock the front foot, and play your lute on its heel. So your weight is on the back, you're setting yourself up by playing the peepaw. The left hand centers your body, and it's advanced. The right hand bends towards the elbow of your left, L, uh, left hand. Wait on the back to set it up correctly. Drop your front foot, left hand stays in the center but the palm turns up while the right hand is setting up at a higher plane. We're gonna repulse the monkey. We're gonna do several things. Bring the top hand to our ear, 
and we're going to lift off the ground up of our front foot because the weight is on the back to hold us stable. Here we go. Lift, ear, stretch out on the toe, then the heel. Then you're in the zigzag position and what are you going to do? You're going to swivel or pivot on the ball of your front foot, meet in the center of the hands, and you're going to repulse, push forward, pull back. Setting it up correctly. Right hand now is in the center, left hand is up higher. We're leading with our toe, so no weight on the front heel. Everybody here? Lift up off your toe, multitask, ear, toe, heel. Zigzag by pivoting on the ball, meeting in the center, repulse, two only. Now we're going to use the words pivot and pirouette. When you pivot, normally it's on your heel, and that pertains to the left or front foot. When we pirouette, we're going to put the uh, turn or rotate on our toes of the back foot. But we can't do it together, right? So here we go, one at a time. Pivot on the heel of the front foot. Spin on the toe of your back foot would automatically bring your right hand up and the palm is towards the ceiling. It's like an inside out ball, if, you, if so to speak. We're going to kick out with our right or front heel and we're going to reposition our ball. Spin out with our heel, reposition our ball. Take a L stance, spin the ball, push and put the shuttlecock right there. Put the shuttlecock on the opposite side now, okay? Sit back, sit down, pivot the front foot in, hold the ball. Put the left heel out, right hand comes to the forehead, turn the hips and waist, shuttles, left, all right. Okay, all right, then we come back home. Because you don't know, you, you will see me better if we go back home, okay? All right, then we come back home. Because you don't know, you, you will see me better if we go back home, okay? So what we've done is something neat in that, one, we're learning more about our bodies because we're using different formats and different uh, movements. But not only that, they're familiar movements to some of you but yet they're done on the different side of the body. So normally when you would do um, a right side, now we're twisting it and we're doing it on the left side. So how is that helping our mechanics of our brain to function? It's giving us a full circle of experience, okay? So that's why it's ideal. It's kind of neat in that our body's not used to that. It's been programmed so long to do something more routine and all of a sudden we're switching. It's good. So it's fun, okay? It can be very fun if you don't put pressure on yourself. So essentially, what, what we did was something like this. I'll kind of run it through. Um, sometimes when you get engrossed in doing something, you kind of lose sight of what really is going on. So we parted the wild horse's mane one. So when I'm doing this, you may say to me, Say to yourselves, oh, she's shifting weight. Oh, she's centering. Oh, she's spinning on her axle. Two times we part the wild horse's mane. We take a half step. We spin the ball. We sit on the back foot. We follow that hand going up, and we point it out, and this is our white crane. We drop our front foot. We tuck our elbow. We bisect our body. We set it up correctly. We multitask to brush our knee. We sit back. We take a twist, zigzag in the, that direction. We set it up and we brush knee two. The third brush knee is not really a brush knee, but it sets it up like a brush knee. But we fist that right hand, we take a, a L stance and we deflect. 
We take a parry, and then we take a punch. This is something that you have in your repertoire when you grasp a bird's tail. I'm going to reposition myself. We're going to pivot on the back foot, pivot on the front foot, shift the weight, hook the hand, T stance, cross the face, turn the wrist, single whip. Then we get fancier. We take a half step and we swirl, we rock the front. And we want the weight to go on the back, so we set it on its heel. Then we're setting it up correctly after playing the peepaw. We do a backwards motion or a backwards tai chi walk, repulsing of the monkey. Shifting our weight, centering ourselves. Where we position our hands, where we look, has an important part in what Tai Chi is all about. Then we said we'll get even fancier. We usually pivot on the heel, we pirouette on our toe, we have an upside down um, Tai Chi ball, but when we kick out, we reposition our hand on a zigzag, come out, spin the ball, turn our hips and waist, maiden puts her shuttlecock right there, not down here, right there. Position has an important place. This time we pivot in, we hold our ball. We come out, hips and waist turn only when it shuttles and helps us to put that shuttlecock. Okay, so what I want to do now is teach you the rest. We're going to go to the bottom of the C, but this time we're going to use our left hand and look for that needle. We'll find it. It's there. We center. We come out on a nail. We flash our arms. We sit back. We twist. And we are in cloud hands. But cloud hands only takes us two rotations. And then we T stand set, and the rest is home base. We grasp the bird's tail. This is about like a 14 or 15th movement in a 16 form. So we're nearing closing form. And if you can see, I'm not doing my Tai Chi just so that you can fill in the space with phrases as to what I'm doing, but it falls nicely into an organized piece where you're mentally allowing quiet words, to match quiet movements. Because Tai Chi is not just movements that you can see, but it's all so calculated that you can almost see through my movements that my mind is actively making those movements occur. Okay? Mm -hmm.